We're into round 21 of the AFL season and it gives me great joy to uh, kick off with Craig Bradley who wore the number 21 with pride for Carlton. What a career he had. I could watch Craig Bradley highlights all day long. Yeah. He was just a glorious player, Brownie. I know you were a Carlton fan and you were at this game watching this goal. This is great. The, the, the crowd here, it was one of the loudest I've ever heard, but he got the ball back and then a banana. This was in the heyday when the Blues were right up and about and he just ran them ragged all day. He does and he's just a beautiful player. Left foot, right foot. He was a star cricketer for South Australia, could have chosen either sport. Played yeah. cricket for Victoria, Victoria as well, like, like yeah. a first class game for Victoria and South Australia while he was compiling right. one of the all time and, great and AFL careers. And I think he actually played cricket during the day yeah. on one weekend and then played in an Ansett Cup match on that um, night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, amazing. So just his record, 375 games for Carlton, when you know, three best and fairest, two premierships, four all Australians. And amazingly, he played 89 games for Port Adelaide in the yeah. Sandford before coming over. Came for three best and fairest in a premiership. Yeah, he's a South yeah. Australian legend. What a player he was. Lord, I'm with you. You could watch that all day. As you could watch these highlights all day as well. Well, I certainly could because Mark Williams was one of the most ruthless competitors that we've ever seen. Probably the best football person I've met. And I say that because of his passion for the game. And to see him still sitting on the interchange bench from Melbourne, barking instructions. He's out there pre-game, helping players with their skill and their development. For, so for a senior coach to do that, I mean, this is just one of the great football people recognised in the Australian Football Hall of Fame. So his record, 201 games for Collingwood and Brisbane, uh, a goal-kicking midfielder as well, and, and played a lot of football and four premierships in the Sample as well for Port Adelaide and played some footy for Westies and then his coaching career speaks for itself. An equal on impact with this number 21 next up is, uh, is a man who also had great success after he finished playing. Neil Barm I referred to, a, a premiership player and a famous <laughs> member, TJ. Oh, no. Of the, of the Richmond era. I'm surprised we played that. I'm glad we did because that's, that was what he was about and he was just... Well, uh, no, he was more than that. <laughs> no, that's what he was about. No, he, he, was, he was a great player, um, a great player, but a great leader and, and always was and there's also a lot of uh, going on there. That was one game. Greatest hits. Did you choose all that visit. No, you could have chosen one game. Play. I think, Barmy, if you're watching, uh, he, he actually was a very gifted player. That was a little Give brain Give us his played. record, Damon. I think it was all in the one quarter, Brownie. That. <laughs> uh, one five nine games, two two nine goals, two time Premiership player. That's for the Victorians part of it. And mm. he also coached Norwood, didn't he, Kane? For, and, for two players as well. And every other and Melbourne club, as well. Every club him. he goes to has success. Yeah, Correct. yeah. Because he's, he's that calming influence. He was at Geelong. He, oh, Collingwood didn't treat him all that well. I wouldn't have thought. But um, but he, he was, no, they didn't. Mate, he was dispatched in the stands to watch the games. I mean, it was terrible what they did. Um, uh, but he was coach of the year in '94. With Melbourne getting into yeah, a, a prelim. in the prelim. Yeah. Round 21, 2000. Sorry on the violence theme. It was a demolition derby. <laughs> Who will forget that? It's Fremantle and West Coast. There's these two, the sparring yeah, partners. These <laughs> two, come on, and, and, and Gardy's just holding him off. But uh, then it just turned. And it was on for young and old. And I think, I think uh, you know, Fremantle was sick and tired of being bullied by the West Coast Eagles. And they come out and there's Dale Kickett, who's just launching some bombs. And Phil Reed's in there. And there's Ben Cousins. And... It was an Gardner amazing again. game in, in Gardner. So uh, it's one that um, yeah. Yeah, set that tradition alight. So uh, for all the junior footballers heading out, um, <laughs> just disregard the last few yeah. moments uh, as we uh, continue and have a look at uh, some of the greats. Is this me, is it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, when you talk about the greats... Uh, oh, sorry, kids, block your eyes again. Oh, Francis one. Burke, 1980 grand final. Francis OK, Burke this was a demolition job at the, the expense of Collingwood. 81 points, Brigham and Francis Tiger Burke was just an out-and-out out champion, line. and that is one of the more memorable sort of moments there as he just had blood streaming down his face. That was at Arden Street, a famous game, and he, and he then got thrown forward, TJ, and, and then contributed to, uh, to the Tigers up that part of the ground. Yeah, because the year before, he'd relinquished the captaincy which sort of like prolonged his career and then getting back to the 1980 grand final that's when he um, you know sort of went gangbusters there and uh, along with Kevin Bartlett seven goals ensured they had that 81 point win. Going to take Nine you back to the 1974 season where they had an elephant out on Arden Street. Um, <laughs> TJ, probably the only one alive in this era, so can you take us through it? Round 21, this was, in Arden Street. Uh, talk us through how this, this occurred. Well, no. was it... Was it but that Dome, wouldn't happen these days. No, Damo, no. was it something to do with uh, ANSET sponsorship? Of, yeah. uh, or b budget... Spon Bob ANSET sponsorship? Yeah, the origins budget? of it have been varied over the journey. Barry Cheatley, who was a famous marketer at North Melbourne, mm -hmm. I think he had something to do with the promotion of it uh, and around it, but it got out of control and out of hand. Occupational and it was a, health 
very shape. hairy These moment. Days, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it did. Um, let's get to you, Brownie. Yeah, 2000, famous season for that man, Matthew Lloyd's uh, career when the Bombers went all the way through to win the flag. But uh, late in the season, around 21, you and your team managed to uh, produce what has been referred to as the flood game, where you basically un and dismantled this great Essendon team. And you got 32 touches and a goal within it. And this man, Chris Grant, gets the winner. 29 disposals that night, 12 marks and two goals. He was a superstar. Didn't get a vote this night, Chris Grant, with those stats. But the Bombers had not lost a game all year. And we couldn't beat them on the talent we had. Terry Wallace brought us in during the week. And he's still going to try something different. Mm. He goes, any time that we lose the football, I want every player on our team to run back into the Bombers' forward 50. And that was it. That was their whole game plan. Nobody had ever done it. And he said, as soon as we lose the football, you just run back. That's exactly what we did. We did it for about two and a half quarters. Then we needed to win the game. And we opened it up a little bit, but uh, it was a, a, a bit of coaching genius. How'd the next you go? week, hey, how'd you yeah, go? 32. 32, 32 and a goal. Yeah. Votes, um, no, no, 32 and one. A, a yeah. round 21 and then 1995, Plugger kicked his hundredth and thousandth goal in the one game. So he's playing yeah, against Frio, so the crowd got to run out twice. So there he is. Yeah, the, the great fellow uh, charging out from full forward. He was so explosive, never missed. So there they are, got to run out for him. So round 21, 1995. So they did it once, and then he gets hit with a lace-out pass for his uh, next one. Uh, Simon Garlic. Simon Garlic, that is, hits him lace out. They just sat back in their seats. Everyone's getting ready for Plugger to kick his... And they've ran out there again against poor Fremantle. Fremantle went through a lot back in those days. Oh, 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 oh. gets hit. But, uh, one of the great days at the SCG. <laughs> yeah, it certainly was. Good stuff, Lordo. Uh, some great memories there.